everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Joelle and if you have watched this intro before and would like to jump straight to today's practice, you can go to this timestamp in the video right now. But if not, let's talk about the five yoga poses that we should all be doing every day. So the five beginner poses where we get the most bang for our buck. And I know I say in many of my videos that 10 minutes a day can make a difference in our bodies and mind, and I truly believe that, but these are poses that you can literally sequence together in less than five minutes, as you'll see at the end of this video. So no excuses not to get on our mat and take care of ourselves for less than five minutes a day. So in choosing five beginner poses to practice daily, let me start by saying that there are five general types of yoga poses standing poses, balancing poses, seated poses, back bends, and finally supine or resting poses. Standing poses, as the name implies, is any posture where we are standing on our feet. We do standing poses in order to ground the body, in order to work on the strength of the lower body as it moves us around, and to work on our stability. Stability is more important than flexibility when it comes to standing poses, so we're looking for length and strength in perfect harmony. Some common examples of standing postures include mountain pose, goddess pose, also known as yogi squat, standing forward fold, triangle pose, and the warrior poses, like for example, warrior two. But my standing pose of choice that we should all be doing every day is downward facing dog. Now, you might have guessed that this one would make the list at some point or another, so we may as well kick right off with it. When I was doing my yoga teacher training, I was actually taught the phrase, a dog a day keeps the doctor away. And that saying basically reflects the fact that downward facing dog is essentially a global pose for the body. It works on the feet, the ankles, the calves, the hamstrings, the hips, the shoulders. It's great for both building strength and for waking up the body as well. We can modify downward facing dog by bending the knees as much as we need to, or by bringing some movement to the pose, like by pedaling the feet, or shaking the head yes and no. And if none of those modifications work for today, then we might simply choose to swap it out for a child's pose as a more restful alternative. And by the way, I know that downward facing dog may not look at first glance like a standing pose, but if you think about it, we are standing on our feet and it doesn't really fit any of the four other categories, so I'm going to roll with it. Balancing poses are great for working on connective tissues. Again, similar to standing poses, we want to prioritize stability over flexibility in balancing poses, in this case so that we don't fall over. Balance poses are a great way to work on core strength, which may be necessary as we progress towards more advanced postures in the future, or just for taking care of ourselves in everyday life. Balance poses can seem difficult or even scary at first, but I promise you that over time they do start to become more accessible, and once you start to improve, that's where you can really start to have fun with them as well. A couple examples of balancing poses would be arm balances, such as crow pose, or inversions, such as shoulder stand, or maybe headstand. And it's also worth pointing out here that of course there is going to be some overlap in categories, so something like tree pose, for example, is both a standing pose and a balancing pose, or something like boat pose is both a seated pose and a balancing pose. So let's remain flexible with our categorizations. My balance pose of choice for us today is plank pose. And before I lose you, because I know that planks can be really tough for many of us, but remember we said that balancing poses are about building core strength. And plank is a great posture to work on developing that core strength without the risk or any fear of falling over that we might have in other types of balance poses. And we can work to progress towards a traditional plank by first holding a plank on our knees, then over time maybe beginning to hover the knees, and eventually building into that straight line plank and maybe lifting one leg at a time if you want to get all fancy. Planks do get easier with time, I promise. Seated poses work more on flexibility than we did in the first two categories. These are great for stretching out areas like our hips and our hamstrings, again, without any fear of toppling over. And you can imagine that the most important part of the body in seated poses is our pelvis. Everything else leads off of it. Examples of classic yoga seated postures include staff pose or seated forward folds, 
cobbler's pose, also known as butterfly pose, hero pose, and the famous lotus pose. My seated posture of choice for us today is a seated twist, also known as half Lord of the Fishes posture. Twists are so important in yoga. They can help with spinal mobility, they can help with digestion issues, and in this seated twist in particular, we're also working to open up our hips. So again, another nice global pose that involves different areas of the whole body. And this is a really great one for those of us who spend so much time sitting in our day-to-day -day life. If this seated twist is difficult and we're looking for modifications, you can always choose to straighten one leg or to sit up on a block or on a bolster just to give those hips a little bit more space. And of course, as with any twist pose, always remember to do both sides. Back bends are a way of opening up through the front of the body, which is essential for spinal health and longevity. If, again, you think about how much time many of us are spending seated or hunched over our phones, a lot of us will tend to develop rounded shoulders or even a little bit of a hunchback as we get older. And back bends are a great way for the body to fight back against that. When we're starting back bends, we generally start with just gentle flexions and extensions of the spine. So something like cat-cow being a great example. And then progressively over time, we might build towards some deeper stretches. Some classic examples of yoga back bends include puppy pose, camel pose, cobra pose, and wheel pose. My back bend of choice for us today is bridge pose, which is a really nice and gentle way for us to start exploring back bends. If you've tried any of my hip pain routines before, then you might already know that bridge pose is a great way to build a little fire in our glutes and work our leg muscles as we're working to open up through our chest and back muscles. And for those days where bridge pose might be a little bit too intense for us all on its own, we can modify by doing a supported bridge instead with a yoga block under the hips, maybe experimenting with it at different height settings, and just letting our body settle into it and rest. Which brings us to our final category of yoga poses, resting or supine poses, which is any posture where we're lying on our back. These can continue the seated work of opening up through the hips and hamstrings, but typically in a gentler way than seated postures. Supine poses can often be done by keeping the eyes closed and just mindfully focusing on our breath and on the experience that our body is having in a particular posture. Supine poses are a really nice way to end a yoga class because they help to calm not only the body but the mind as well. And some examples of supine or resting poses can include any form of supine twist, half wind pose, full wind pose, reclined pigeon or also called sleeping pigeon, and happy baby pose. And my supine pose of choice for us today is actually my favorite yoga posture of all, which is Shavasana, or corpse pose. Shavasana is kind of like the cherry on top at the end of a yoga class, meaning we have worked the body hard, we've given our best, and now it's time to reap the fruits of our labor. That said, for many people, Shavasana can actually be one of the most challenging postures there is, because it requires an ability to both be still and to be present, something that not many of us are used to doing on a regular basis. The thought process behind corpse pose is that every time we come out of it, we have a chance at a new life, hence the name, a new life full of new choices and possibilities. In Shavasana, the body stays completely still, but the mind stays aware, just observing. I have been asked before, but what happens if I fall asleep in Shavasana? And my response to that is, an unsuccessful Shavasana is a successful nap. So if that is what your body needs in that moment, then you can't go wrong. Even a posture like Shavasana can be modified to find the most amount of comfort on a particular day. You might choose, for example, to keep the feet flat on the mat and simply rest the knees together. Or if you'd like, you can place a pillow underneath the knees for a little bit of extra support. 
Or another nice option can be to float the legs in the air just to give them a chance to be weightless after doing so much work throughout the day. Because most of the practices so far on my channel have only been about 10 minutes long, we haven't really had a chance to explore Shavasana yet together, but that's about to change. The next video coming out on this channel will actually be a 10 minute guided Shavasana where we'll have a chance to get in touch with ourselves and our own mind and how we might like to be re born in our own way with a chance at a bit of a new life. And I would love to have you join me for that exploration together. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, a less than five minute practice with our five core yoga poses from today and for any day. I would love it if you could quickly take this opportunity to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Don't forget to check out the description box below this video for suggested other practices and resources. And please take a moment to let me know in the comments below what your favorite yoga pose is. Now that you know mine. Is it one of these five or is it maybe something that I haven't mentioned today? And once you've done that, grab your mat and I will see you out there. All right, welcome. Let's take a deep inhale and exhale together as we come into the first of our five daily poses, which is downward facing dog. So from an all fours position, let's step the hands forward a few inches, tuck the toes, and lift the hips up towards the sky. And remember that we can keep bent knees here, we can pedal it out. We might shake the head yes and no. Just feeling all those little areas we talked about working together, feet, calves, ankles, hamstrings, hips and shoulders, waking the body up and a little bit of strength work as well. Beautiful, let's set the knees down gently Come back to an all fours position to come into plank, our balancing pose. And that might mean plank on your knees, it might mean hovering those knees an inch or two off the mat, or it could mean stepping back into a more traditional straight line plank. Pressing the heels towards the back of the mat, pressing the hands into the ground, lifting the body a tiny bit higher as we squeeze through the legs and the glutes and the abs. We're not here forever, building up that core heat, and we'll set the knees down again, beautiful. Then we'll come into our half Lord of the Fishes, our seated pose for today. So bring the left foot to the outside of the right knee, then hug that left knee in as you twist towards the left. So with every inhale, think about sitting up even taller in the spine. And every exhale brings you a little deeper into that twist. Opening up through the hips here as we come back to center and we'll switch sides. So the right foot comes flat to the floor outside the left knee, hugging that right knee in now. Inhale sits you up tall and exhale twists you towards the right side. I'm just noticing any differences from one side to another as we open up through the back and through the hips. Wonderful, great job. We'll come back to center and let's just take our time to make our way onto our back. Setting up for our back bend pose, which is bridge pose. So bringing the feet underneath the knees. Maybe closing the eyes here. And then on an inhale, we can squeeze the glutes to lift the hips up towards the sky. And you might just stay right there. Or you might also choose to clasp the hands underneath the back. Walk the shoulders a little bit closer together. And lift the chest up even higher. Opening up through the back and through the entire front of the body here. Quadriceps, hip flexors, and making the back of the body those legs and glutes work. Lovely, so then let's release that. And let's extend the legs out long, keep the eyes closed as we turn the palms towards the sky and find our Shavasana, our 
resting pose or supine pose for today and for every day. And I hope that even just this very short practice has shown you that just a few minutes can be enough to build a little heat, strength, and openness and make a difference to our bodies and minds. And I hope that I will see you again soon, hopefully tomorrow, to either practice this daily sequence again, or perhaps practice a slightly longer one together. Thank you so much for your support and for joining me today, and well done. Namaste.